one way we can intervene at the bedside is to put um, someone on what we call continuous renal replacement therapy. So this becomes the kidney outside of the body. Literally, um, we filter blood, we get rid of um, fluids by ultrafiltration. We filter the blood using um, diffusion in a dialysate fluid. We have a, a filter here with a um, semi-permeable membrane in the middle of it. And we have a fluid called dialysate going in one direction, counter current to blood. So it creates a pressure gradient, a change in hydrostatic pressure. So we can start to have molecules move across the membrane and we can filter them out that way. We can add something else. Um, we use on a replacement um, filter here, and we call that convection. That causes solvent drag, so big molecules when you have an infection per se, very big protein molecules that can't normally get filtered through. We can try to filter them through this by using convection, and we cause that solvent drag. So we use diffusion and convection um, and active transport to try to get rid of toxins, um, things that the kidney should have been doing for us but is not in causing further to issue oxygenation problems. Um, this device is used frequently in my unit um, because of a failing heart and volume overload. That is the most common device that we use. Another thing that happens, so as we see multiple organ dysfunction happen, the lungs fail, the kidneys fail, and then we start to see intra-abdominal hypertension because that fluid is seeping into everybody's tissue space rather than into their vascular space. We start to see people what we call edema. We see their, they, we call it, they kind of puff up like the Michelin man. They look very, very puffy everywhere. Their face, their eyelids, their lips, their ears, their entire body, anywhere where fluid can move, it will go to a space of less resistance. So they blow up everywhere. And when you see that edema, what we call it, you have to think, well, that's happening internally also. It happens around the brain and it starts to call what we call cerebral edema and compresses on the brain and increases cranial pressure. It does it in the gut and it starts to compress down on all the organs in the belly and pushing up and it worsens respiratory failure because you've got increased pressure in the abdomen, pushes up on the diaphragm and then you can't breathe. So all this impairment of moving volume because of a poor heart ends up putting people into what we call multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. And it's actually a very, very, very high mortality rate. So we get very alarmed when we see one organ go and then a second organ. When we are dealing with two organs that require functionality outside of the body, with each technology, I can put something on to support a heart. I can put something on to support a lung. I could put something on to support the kidney. I can measure pressures in the brain. I can measure pressures in the belly. I can do a lot of things to see where we're at, but the more technology that I start to have on my patients, the worse prognostic value that they have.